and we get the super fight again. Canelo, Triple G2, Brian Kenny, Sergio Mora, and Chris Mannix. And Chris, we know these men are now older, and that should favor Canelo. Many people thought Triple G won the first fight. Yeah, I thought he won the first fight as well. But Canelo Alvarez stands to make the most significant adjustment. Younger fighter, and if he learned anything from that first fight, is that when he's active, when he's aggressive, he is effective. When he's fighting off the ropes, he opens the door for Gennady Golovkin to steal rounds. Golovkin now 36 years old. Alvarez still in his prime at the age of 28. Sergio, I, I thought it could easily be a 6-6 fight first time around. How did you have the first fight? Golovkin won by one round, but a draw wasn't far-fetched to them. This is going to be another competitive fight. But in my opinion, Golovkin can't fall behind on a lead. He needs to start off fast, take control, keep control. Golovkin able to win the middle rounds by most accounts in that last fight, but it was Canelo Alvarez summoning his will, summoning his energy to win many of the later rounds, however many, is really up to your subjective judging choice and doing enough to earn a draw. And there is Canelo Alvarez, the lineal middleweight champion of the world, the man who beat Miguel Cotto. Trace that lineage back to Bernard Hopkins. Had to fight hard and fight back to earn a draw and keep his title. Sergio, what do you think you learned the most the first time out against Golovkin? To stay off the ropes. I think Golovkin had success in he was back there against the ropes. Canelo needs to stay off there. Keep the fight in the middle of the ring and invest in the body a little early. Alvarez, a fan favorite, obviously here, Mexican fans, fans in the southwestern part of the United States here in Las Vegas, also very fan friendly, Bernard Hopkins there, former middleweight champion of the world, as we get ready now for the rematch between Canelo Alvarez and Canadi Golovkin, should be outstanding. And Live on HBO pay-per-view from the sold-out T-Mobile Arena here in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing this schedule for the WBC, WBA, IBO, Ring Magazine, Middleweight Championship of the World. Promoted by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and Triple G Promotions. Presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Sponsored by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Como quieres viajar? Fly your way to Mexico with Interjet Airlines. Venom, the movie starring Tom Hardy, worldwide everywhere, October 5th. Fred Loya Insurance, put Fred in your corner. And Capital Holdings. 
sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Executive Director, Bob Bennett, with our supervisors for this belt, WBC President Mauricio Sulema, from the WBA, Mariana Borisova, and from the IBO, Jorge Alonso. Your three judges scoring at ringside, Glenn Feldman, Dave Moreni, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the action begins inside the ring, referee in charge, Benji Estemis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready. The fighters are ready. Millions of fans watching live around the world are ready. Las Vegas, Nevada, make some noise if you are Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, trimmed in gold, he weighed in officially 159 and one half pounds. Professional record stands outstanding with 49 victories, one defeat, two bouts, even with 34 wins coming by way of knockout, the former multi-time two-division champion of the world, El Hijo de Guadalajara, El Orgullo de Mexico. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks. He weighed in 159 and one half pounds. This veteran in 39 professional bouts, 38 victories, including 34 knockouts, no defeats. One bout even, he is the unified WBA, WBC, IBO, Ring Magazine, middleweight champion of the world, from Karaganda, that jab early, invest in the body also because Canelo I think got the better of the body work in the first fight, but the jab was key for Golovkin. I mentioned the age discrepancy between 6 to 28. Golovkin is not ageless. It seems like he is, but he isn't. We get skewed with the view of Bernard Hopkins who fought into his 50s. Let's see what he has left. Round number one, we're underway. Scheduled for 12 middleweight championship of the world. Lovkin comes out jabbing in the white trunks. Melo Alvarez in the black. It's rare for a fighter in his mid-30s to come back from a deficit. So he needs to take these early rounds and take control of this fight. He can't lose control of the fight with the younger fighter. Lovkin immediately jabbing. Everything works off that magnificent jab. Conventionally sound, he's consistent. You see his jab comes off sharp, short right hand, hook, very conventional, but everything he does when you put it together is outstanding. The bank is coming into this fight because that he's already gone 12 rounds with him. He knows what that power feels like. And he's taking a big shot. He will be phased for looking at Golovkin. I don't think either man was really hurt in that first fight. It's not as if they didn't feel it. Golovkin, of course, is the man who has the reputation as having more power, but at no point was Canelo off his feet, at no point was he staggered, even when he took Golovkin's best shots. He's very sound defensively, very good. Golovkin also very, very good at moving his head and staying out of harm's way. The power is important, knowing how, how strong your opponent is, but even more important is the distance and timing. 
But here I can already see Canelo being a little bit more bold with uh, coming forward. Because he already felt the timing and the distance from Granado. He has his hands up. He feels a lot more comfortable being in, in, inside in, in punching quarters. Want to follow up after that just meeting the jab outside. Jab contest here between the two champions. Shifter here, we see Golovkin backing up. Canelo's the one inching him with his little forward. Unlike the first fight where Golovkin was uh, the pressure fight of the entire fight, right here we see Canelo inching in. It's a good point, sir, Joe, in that when you watch almost any Triple G fight, he's the man moving forward. The other guy's moving back, always. And that has not happened as of yet here early in round one. And it's real subtle. It's not like Golovkin's backing up. It's just Canelo's inching his way in. It's like he's the one being the aggressor so far in this first round. Now, one of the messages coming from Canelo's corner during that first fight was make Golovkin fight back up. Easier said than done for 12 rounds. But Canelo was just trying for that early on. Opening round here in the rematch, highly anticipated. Fans wanted to see it again. It was not only very close, it was just fantastic to watch. And you know you're watching supreme competitors, world championship competitors. That's round one. Salió más precavido que la otra vez, eh. Está queriendo pasar con un solo golpe. Ponte aquí, 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 mueven la cintura aquí. Aquí cerradito, cerradito y ya solo aquí. Very, very good. Deep breath. Calvin. Very, very good. Make sure we keep that jab on him. A little more faint. And when you back up, stay down. Again. Okay, stay down. LeBron James taking it all in, round two here in Las Vegas. Brian Kenny, Sergio Mora, and Chris Mannix. The rematch, Saul Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin. How'd you have round one, Chris? I gave it a Golovkin, but it was close. I thought Canelo did some good work moving forward. I thought Golovkin's jab was really is an effective story. We'll watch very closely here if Golovkin continues to be a little more stationary. Good with the jab, but unable to just impose his will. Even in that first fight, Sergio, Golovkin constantly moving forward and doing that little giddy-up move he has. A little skip to Canelo and not letting him breathe at any point. So far, Canelo is the man saying, no, 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 I'm moving toward you. And that had to be something that we worked on with Canelo because, yes, that's mental pressure. And it looks bad with the judges as well. It's not really that you're boxing, you're being pushed back by the stronger fighter. But right here, Canelo's not giving no inch. She hasn't moved back. Good Which, hook. Though. That's a great hook by Canelo Alvarez. Flashing off with the hook after he threw many jabs to set that up. And a jab to the body. That is a hard jab as well being thrown by Alvarez. It's still very early in the fight. So right now, Canelo is keeping this fight in center. Basically helping control it the extent that he's able to at least by throwing hard shots. Those are menacing punches that he is throwing straight ahead on Golovkin. Golovkin must respect that. Beautiful counter punch there by Canelo. He didn't even have to step back to get that uppercut on left foot. He just moved his upper body. Just building stuff there by Canelo. And landed with a jab too. Nice clean jab. And already there's some redness on the face of Triple G. Most boxers need to step back to land those counters, but he already knows the timing of the Lofton, so he just had to move his upper body to come back with some hard combinations. Golovkin just doesn't seem to have the same level of energy in this fight already. He's not moving forward. He's not the, the predator as of yet in this fight. Well, the faster hands are on Canelo's part, and right now I think this Gennady Golovkin has to fear the speed of Canelo in this close. That jab landed by Golovkin. Enormous amount of energy to keep either of these men off of him. You can see Canelo came in with that plan in mind. A good hard body shot, dipping low, 
and landing the hook to the belly. All week, the Watkins team has been begging Canelo Alvarez not to run in this fight. So far, he's not running. It's a good hook being landed there by Golovkin. All these shots will count. All these shots matter quite a bit when you're judging the fight. So far, Canelo looks like a different man. That's round two. Right? Okay, a little water, man. Don't give him a fuck with your spec. Okay. Throw that jab and stay, stay tight and then counter from that. Okay. Even if a single shot, that's okay with me. Okay. And don't worry about a combination right now. Just pound it. All right? Okay. Okay, a little breeze, man. So again, use your boca sound, boca sound. All right, let's go. Catch it, catch it, but it's Catch it, it's Bravo, it's good for the Deep breath. There is the lead hook by Canelo Alvarez. And Sergio, you tell us, after throwing one jab after another, here's Triple G. Didn't see that first punch coming out. And that's what happens when you start getting hit with jabs like that. You're blocking the jab coming straight at you. And then you come around the glove and you get caught off guard. Round three, Chris Mannix, how do you have it so far? I gave that round to Canelo Alvarez, even up through two. Both these rounds, though, extremely close. But a shot like you saw Canelo land in that replay. They ended a couple of those that second round. I thought that second round was wider for Canelo. Again, I'm calling it, not scoring it at the same time. But again, Canelo Alvarez looks like a different man. And a good body shot by Triple G. You mentioned the importance of getting off to a good start given that Golovkin is 36 years old. Sergio, I don't quite see the same aura, you know, that menace from Golovkin as we've seen his whole career. Certainly in the first fight. I don't think Canelo's laying. Canelo started really fast. I mean, the, the hands, the foot movement, the upper body movement, there's a lot of speed on Canelo's part. And when it comes to older fighters, that's what they fear. It's not power, it's speed. Now, Golovkin will have to force himself to move forward. He's out of the way of that right hand. He's given that to shell and perhaps change his rhythm in this fight as well. And another thing, when, whenever you're dealing with a fighter in his mid 30s, it's crucial for them to start off fast. They need to put these early rounds in the bank because if they fall behind, normally age won't let you catch up, especially with a young champion like Canelo Alvarez. It takes a lot of energy to win these rounds. They're very close in terms of skill, in terms of desire. It really takes an awful lot of rhythm and then how much energy you have okay. summer to throw your combinations and win portions of each round. Right now, you can see that eagerness in Canelo coming forward, looking for an opportunity. I mean, there's a little jitteriness to his speed and his foot movement. He can't wait to, to explode. And Golovkin just looking for that one big shot right now. Canelo also with the head movement on the way in, constantly shifting his head, moving his head on the way in, not eating shots on the way in. You see a little mark under the eye of Gennady Golovkin there on the right cheek. Could have been the hook that was landed. That was a hard hook. It could be any number of the jabs. Canelo Alvarez looking much better in the early rounds of this fight. In the first fight, it was pretty close through three or four rounds. Golovkin then imposed himself one most of, at least I believe, the middle rounds. And then late, well, some had a Canelo, some had a Golovkin. It ended some, up being a draw. And some that had it 10 2. Canelo. Which sounds, what's the word? Inexplicable? Ridiculous? Stop, stop stealing. Good body shots there, and Canelo Alvarez able to land right away. Big breath taken in by Golovkin. Everything Canelo is throwing is hard. He knows this is a tough man, a real champion, standing in front of him. A good push. Three rounds here in this rematch. Toma aire primero. Agua. No quiero que te me descuides, ¿eh? Acuérdate, son peleadores que de un solo golpe tienen una pelea. 
hay que estarle llaveando arriba y abajo pintándole el jab, porque ahorita te lo quiso agarrar por acá y coger, ¿por qué? Porque se lo tiras igual, hay que pintarlo y no tirarlo, hay que tirarlo dos veces, hay que picarle abajo y arriba, que no sepa qué hora le vas a tirar el jab, ¿ok? Y aquí. wants his fighter Canelo to alternate the speed of the jabs and that's really good advice. Pick him upstairs and downstairs because he doesn't want Golovkin to time any of those shots right now. Round four in Las Vegas, Brian Kenny with Sergio Mora and Chris Mannix. And Eddie Golovkin still undefeated, 37-0 and 1. Canelo Alvarez with just one loss looking for his 50th win. One loss of course to Floyd Mayweather. This version of Canelo is very difficult to beat because his hand speed at this division, at the middleweight division, is very fast and explosive and he still carries that power. If he can put these early rounds in the bank, then it's going to be very difficult for a fighter in his mid-30s to come back from this. Golovkin picking up the pace. Canelo tries to answer. At a certain point, Golovkin is going to have to realize he's got to win rounds. I mean, he has to know the frustration. That's a good hook for him. You know he knows the frustration of that draw. He thought he won that first fight. And he has to know too. Good uppercut by Golovkin. As now he seems to be answering the call. He knows he has to put rounds in the bank. I wonder what Abel Sanchez is thinking watching Canelo Alvarez fight in this style. Not once has Canelo fought against the ropes. Every time he's put the pressure on and fought in the middle of the ring. This is exactly how Abel Sanchez wanted Canelo Alvarez to fight. Body work there by Golovkin. In that first fight, Canelo Alvarez was content to be on the ropes quite a bit. That has not happened, I don't think, once so far through three plus rounds. Well, this is the Mexican style that Golovkin and his team wanted Canelo to fight the first, first fight, and they're getting it today. level chess here between these two. They know each other pretty well at this point. Canelo able to impose his energy and his will in the early going. Golovkin answered back nicely in this round. Must start winning rounds and winning as he knows cleanly and clearly to put him in the back. Looking to answer now. Both men are just too sound, Sergio, for either one to get on any type of extended point. You know, it's a pretty good body shot there by Canelo. And Golovkin landed a sneaky right uppercut, which is what they told him to be aware of, because Golovkin likes to throw that, that punch, that 45 degree uppercut that you don't see coming. Final seconds of round number four. Seemingly a better round for Golovkin. Looking to be the middleweight champion, stay the middleweight champion, depending on your view. Back it up a couple times too many, okay? Now when you go to the when you throw that good jab, give me a jab right here too, okay? And you gotta be lower with those shots. You understand? Yeah. Lower. Yes. I don't want them on top. Okay. okay. in that round, Chris, did you give them a look in that round? I did, 38-38, uh, all even on my score. I thought Kennedy Karachin came out stronger early, landed a clean uppercut, I thought he was better with his team. See, I have a three rounds to one, that's, that's a big swing right there. Sergio, your thoughts on what Golovkin did there as he lands a body shot right away? Did he change the direction of this fight in round four? Well, I, I agree with Abel Sanchez and Golovkin's Golopin, corner. He's backing up a little bit too much, and that's not the way the first fight started. So there's a shift here. Canelo being the aggressive pushing, forcing Golovkin backwards. Yeah, a key point of this, too, is as you see, 
Golovkin has such a good jab, he's able to land there. But when Canelo is able to slip that jab on the way in, well, there's just no momentum for Golovkin to garner. Nails him there with an up and cut on the way in. Good action here as we start round five. Good body shot there by Canelo. Another, another thing that Abel Sanchez told Golovkin is they need more jabs. And I have noticed that in the first fight, Golovkin was landing a polarizing jab, a timed jab right here. It's not, it's not here. Right hand by Canelo after he missed with a hook. Golovkin able to touch him up on the way in. Golovkin likes to fight in the phone booth, likes to be close. Hard to do against Canelo Alvarez at age 28. He's extremely strong. And Sergio, it's very difficult to stand in front of Canelo. I think you can just jab and box convention. When you're in front of this kind of determined fighter, and it looks like that, that's the determination in Canelo that we're seeing right now. He's coming forward. It's, it's explosiveness, and Golovkin seeing this. Maybe that's the reason he's being pushed back, and the fact that he's not throwing that polarizing jab like he did the first fight. Maybe Golovkin has come up from the shadows in an incredible amateur career, but he had management difficulties, was never really on the fast track to greatness. He just kept winning fights and winning the respect of fans worldwide. Canelo has been kind of the chosen one from the start. He jumped up to challenge Floyd Mayweather. That's his only loss. Other than that, it's just been a rocket to stardom for Canelo Alvarez. And here they are, face to face, worlds colliding, Kazakhstan versus Mexico. Punishing jab being landed by Canelo, the head movements there coming forward. This is this is Mexican style. This is what Galati wanted the first fight. Well, he's getting it now, and Canelo's getting the better of it. Constant head movement. Golovkin able to slip that jab. Another jab is slipped. That's the amazing thing. Sergio, if you could slow this down and see the amount of times that each fighter is able to make the other one miss. It's hard to, it's hard to even count. And they're missing by only an inch, which is just enough. There, that's beautiful pivoting there by Golovkin. But yes, a, sh a slight little shift, just an inch, to miss away the counter. It's just beautiful. Shots like that. Such a high level of concentration to fight at close quarters. And vicious for every second. Let's knock him out, all right? Come on. Just put out him. Punch him. That jab opened up a cut on the eyebrow of Canelo. But was it enough to win the round? Abel Sanchez in Golovkin's corner says, we got to start fighting this guy. We can't fall behind on points. I, I don't, it, it's rare to see Abel Sanchez speak to Golovkin that way, where he's given him, I don't know, kind of a rah-rah version speech, right? They're, so they're looking for him to, to fight more. Abel Sanchez is telling Golovkin that he needs to fight more. He needs to start looking for the knockout. But Canelo looks really sharp, really explosive. It's not as easy as, as it was in the first fight for Golovkin to come forward this time around. Well, that's what I mean. I think it's telling that Abel Sanchez is there, like, you know, just kind of slapping him in the chest and encouraging Golovkin, trying to tell him, come on, let's go. How did you score that last round first? I gave that round to Canelo Alvarez. The speed for Canelo is the biggest difference. Canelo Alvarez is standing there trading and he's throwing with incredible speed and accuracy. And in Canelo's corner, Eddie Reynoso said, he's not going to keep up with you and your speed because you're much younger. Youth is going to be a factor here and it's showing. Yeah, the age is showing somewhat with Golovkin. Will he be able to summon that energy to win the second half of this fight? We're in round six. Championship course, of course, 12 rounds. Canadian Golovkin at the age of 36. In front of a, in his prime, motivated world champion. Hard right hand by Golovkin. 
and Nello coming forward, picking them shots up. Before, he was satisfied with moving around the ring, not catching those punches. Now he's very comfortable with Golovkin's power. Just like right there, he caught a punch, come back with a left hook, but back comes Golovkin. Tries to look to the body as well, Nello able to land that. Uppercuts and hooks by both men. Well, Golovkin is now here to fight. Does he have enough fight left in him? Body shot there by Canelo. I mean, there's a big difference in the first fight. Canelo's not moving nowhere near as much as he was the first fight. He's investing in the body early, and that's where I think the difference right so far right here with Golovkin. He's moving back, and now he's not throwing enough body punches to Matty Golovkin. Canelo's strength is his consistency. He is just fundamentally sound. He's able to fight you know, for every five second stanza of every minute of every round. And he's able to stay consistent right in front of his man, in this case, Golovkin. And Golovkin can get no momentum, even when it's pretty good back and forth action right here. And he is forcing Matty Golovkin to fight for the back. Very few, if any, fighters have been able to do it. And just standing his ground, to the point Sergio that you made earlier. Standing his ground. It's not that he's you know, surging forward, except now. But he's able just to stay there. He's, he's making a choice not to back up. That was that was a criticism he took in the first fight. He moved too much. Well, that's not the case in this fight. Ahí va, así te quiero ver, cabrón. Así, güey. When you go inside with a jab, just one or two shots. You got about two of uh, the combination. Yeah. Just make sure you're yeah. solid, okay? Yeah, that was a very good round. You just you let him get a couple shots. That's all. Let's go, boys. Let's go, let's go. Each round is its own fight. So Chris Mannix, there's Iron Mike Tyson, from the heavyweight champion of the world. So, Chris, how did you have round six? I gave that round to Canelo Alvarez 58 56 for Canelo in my school time. Yeah, I thought that was a triple G round. So, what about you? Yeah, here's the thing. Both corners thought they won that round. They were very happy with, with Golovkin, with what he did there. They wanted more jabs out of him. And with Canelo, they said, that's exactly what we need to do. You got you to gotta, uh, impose your will with them. And you got will to spare. Both are trying that now here in the early seconds, first couple of seconds of round number seven. Both picking up the work rate, fighting at a more furious pace. No dancing around, there's not much foot movement, standing right in front of each other, making each other miss. Body shot there, right hand on the hip of Golovkin from Canelo Alvarez, he tries with an uppercut. Hook lands. I don't think I've seen Canelo Alvarez back up once in this fight so far, so even if it is a close fight, like the first fight, Golovkin kept coming the entire fight. Right now we see Alvarez doing this in the second fight. See just how sturdy Canelo Alvarez there, with muscles in his back and his neck. Very strong. He's not a tall man. Well built, a little closer to the ground. Extremely strong. Golovkin, of course, has tremendous power. But he also not a big middleweight. More suited for 154 pounds. His power, though, actually the power for both men, plays at 160. They're both that good. Both big punches, both took a big shot at the Golovkin. A right hand by Canelo. Didn't phase him. Very little separating these two champions. Obviously, they both fought to a draw the first time out, the controversial draw. But there is, if you just go in each stanza of each round, there is just not a wide gap between the two. They're that close down to the concentration and the rhythm and then the ability to summon energy 
worth different seconds of each minute of each round. They're just so similar in style, the, the punch selection, the stature, the way they look, the way they fight, they both dig into the body with uppercuts, it's just so similar. And I think the only difference that you can discern really, it almost comes down Sergio to the body type. You can see Canelo Alvarez, who is a little thicker, able to absorb a little more, his punches are a little shorter, and able to stay as active. Body type and body language. In close rounds like this, the body language of the two is different if I look at the face. Canelo looks like a confident fighter coming forward. Instructions there by Abel Sanchez, Gennady Golovkin's corner. He whispered in Golovkin's ear, we're losing here. And then, with the cameras catching, and he says it louder, well, that was a good round. Mixed instructions there by Abel Sanchez. And the thing is, too, all right, for a TV audience, for those calling the fight, maybe you're swayed by that. If you're a judge, you're not hearing any of that, and it just makes no difference to you. But I would say, too, as we get into round number eight here, middleweight championship of the world, Abel Sanchez, initially, uh, the, just, his actions very telling, where he was encouraging, exhorting Golovkin to fight harder, and he says, we're losing, and he also has an ice bag on his face, and we rarely see Golovkin's face being marked up in any way. Chris, your thoughts on that? You know, I, I disagree, actually, with Abel Sanchez. This jab that he's being utilized in the first fight, it was back in that last round. He's able to keep that thing going, he can still pile up the points. Well, he it's said, it was, a, he right said it was a good round, but he said, he whispered in the ear, okay, we're losing. I still agree with that. They have 68, 60, or 67, 66 in favor of Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez, by the way, is a short, hard right hand. I don't think there was much separating those two in the last round. And even in this round already, while we're talking, there's another right hand for Canelo. And that's why a lot of times a draw gets a ton of controversy and people are very upset. And fans come up to me and say, how did you have that? How could it possibly be? I say, how did you score it? And they have no idea what I'm talking about. Let's try it sometime. Scoring these rounds. Of course, Chris, I can disagree with you. I thought that was a Canelo round. But okay, you know, how wide of a gap? Good right hand there. I go up. I mean, it's not wide at all. No, None of these are wide. No, several rounds have been close early on, especially with the back to the The tangible differences, what we've pointed out so far as we're in round eight right now, is that Canelo Alvarez is marching forward every second, basically, of every round. That was not the case in the first fight. And the marked up face of Gennady Golovkin. That also was not the case in the first fight. And the absence of that punishing jab that Golovkin was catching Canelo with in the first fight. It's, it's absent here. We're, we're not seeing it. Lack of body shots as well. A trickle of blood on Canelo Alvarez right near his left eye. That's the type of injury that you should see. That if you're a fighter, you want to target that area. Good hook there by Canelo Alvarez. I love the immediate shakes his head. Both guys have such good chins. The fact is, you can land one plus and press the judges. That can really send things your way, maybe give you, or help give you a round. It's not as simple as winning a round. You're not going to do it with one shot. Let's drop it. You know, it's funny talking about Canelo's chin. I remember back to his American debut against Jose Miguel Cruz. And he was buckled in there. Yes, a lot of people watching that, they wondered if Canelo's American career, he was going to be over just like that. There, a little blood from the nose of Canelo Alvarez as well. He's now getting marked up. As Golovkin clearly landing his own shots, drawing blood on the face of the Mexican champion. Okay, very, very good. That's the kind of one I want. Right here, G, right here. Yeah, That's look the at that. 
Talk it back, Yana. Sure, talk it back. Get it out, Yana. Talk it back. Okay, longer. Longer and lower. Okay? Right. You gotta keep working them the whole round. Okay. The jab is great, but you gotta mix it up. Okay. That shot on top is good. Touch him on the sides too. Open him out. Come on, baby. You can't rest that way. Come on, Jim. Deep breath. Play again, talk it back. Sergio Mora, it is, uh, I, I, when I watch this and I see the blood being drawn by Golovkin marking up the face of Canelo Alvarez where you're barely even seeing the damage being inflicted. It reminds me of Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, especially fighting Sheldra Taylor and realizing just everything is short and hard. Golovkin will hurt, even when it's not obvious, he's hurting you out there. That's a great point. And if you take it back to that Taylor Chavez fight, Taylor was winning the fight, but if you look at both men's faces, it was Taylor who was bruised and battered and swollen and ultimately stopped. And Golovkin is marked up as well, as I've mentioned several times in this fight. But it's not like he's busting up. It's just that that is vastly different from the Golovkin that we normally see. Going through most of the junior middleweight division and then the middleweight division, Golovkin is unmarked. He's the one doing the damage. Withering body attack by Canelo. And Golovkin has to reset. Golovkin trying to go over the top of those uh, of the punches that he caught Rubio with now. Canelo's keeping his hands up. He's trying to go over the shots now. Trying to catch Canelo on top of the head or in the temple. That's a good point. So he's going right to the top of the forehead on Canelo. Right hand by Canelo Alvarez. We're in round nine. It's been crisp so far. Canelo Alvarez seemingly not in control of this fight, but perhaps on top on the scorecards. Chris, for you? We got 76 76 even between Canelo and Golovkin. I thought that was a good round for Gennady in the last one to even it up. He's going to have to adjust to a fight where we're seeing Canelo Alvarez come forward in ways that we did not see Canelo Alvarez come forward in the last one. Sergio, you've been in fights before where you just have to dig deep to where you don't know where it is. I, I, it appears Golovkin is digging deeper than he's ever had to dig before. In my opinion, I, I disagree with uh, uh, Chris Mannix here. I think Canelo has been controlling the pace of the action, backing up Canelo the entire fight. Golovkin has had his moments, but that jab is absent in this fight. That, that's what actually was a difference between uh, the first fight and the first fight. It was that power jab that Golovkin did. He timed Canelo. He backed up Canelo. We're not seeing that at all this time around. This is a brutal fight. War of attrition already. You can see it by their faces. The rematch is brutal. And I disagree slightly with Chris too, but yet on my scorecards, which I'm just trying my best, I've got it 5-3. So how close is that? This razor close. And I think Canelo is winning the fight. I thought Golovkin won the first fight. That doesn't mean you win on the scorecards. They're picking up the pace now, everything they've got. Even missing that jab took so much energy out of him. It took energy out of me. You guys know these broadcasts are not allowed for this period. <laughs> I didn't get that on the way in. That's round nine. Championship rounds coming up. Good action on the inside. That hook. The best shot from Canelo Alvarez. Again, withering action here as we get to the 10th round. Again, my point, Chris, was uh, I'm thinking one guy is winning, and yet what does my scorecard say? 5 3. 
Now I've got it 5-4. It's like when someone says, I had this guy winning all the way. Oh, yeah, how'd you score? 115, 113. Well, guess what? You had it kind of close, actually. And I come across that all the time. And to what Sergio said before, it's not, one thing I'm noticing is that you're not getting the long jab from Golovkin, but when they're on the inside, he's ricocheting that off Canelo's head two or three times. Inside power shots by Canelo Alvarez, trying his hooks and his uppercuts. Now a right hand, spinning around, throwing the uppercut again. Canelo energized at least in these opening seconds. In the first fight, we saw Canelo Alvarez come out firing most every round at the start of each round. He's been more consistent here tonight. And he's coming out firing here at the start of round 10. Good hard right hand by Golovkin. That connect. Two jabs landing by Golovkin. It's rare to see one just bounce off the other man's head unanswered. They're both tired. Round 10. Here's the first round where I see Canelo a little bit fatigued. Good. That was a big right hand there by Golovkin. Golovkin lands that right. After landing some jabs. Now moving his head. He knows he's got to move. Can't stand right in front of Gennady Golovkin. No, sir. Abel Sanchez told him several rounds ago, let's knock this guy out. Probably most people don't think that's possible. That was the first time Gennady Golovkin smelled blood in the water with David Canelo. Canelo did a nice job of covering after taking that big shot. And that's the first time we try to see Canelo trying to hold on and stop the attack of Golovkin. Hard right hand again. He's throwing uppercuts. He's throwing hard right hands. And he's making it work. Hook to the body as well. Good body shot there by Canelo. That caught Golovkin's attention. How difficult is it, Sergio, to vary your attack the way we just saw? Well, that's exactly what you have to do at this stage. When, when you're fighting the elite, you have to vary your attack. You can't be predictable or also get counted. Golovkin is coming on here in round 10. The older man by eight years, but he is the one on the way back. Hard body shot, right hand by Golovkin. Right hand to the head by Golovkin. Both of these men so proud, so hard working. There's that power jab from the first fight. That's what I wanted to see more of. It bloody Canelo's nose right there with that power jab from Golovkin. Oh, they say character shows in the ring. It certainly is here with these two. Round 10, and they are slugging it out. That was an excellent finish to round 10. Yes, it was. Is that jab you were talking about, Sergio, followed by a good right over the top and landed clean at the Temple of Canelo Alvarez. Maybe Golovkin seemingly down on the cards, now marching back. Chris Mannix, how do you have it as we go to round 11? Well, Brian, I've got a 96-94 in favor of Gennady Golovkin. I think he's winning. I think he's done some good things these last four rounds. Well, in Canelo's corner, they admonished him. They said, you're not going to be able to knock this man out. You already tried. You took your best. You got to beat him with speed. You got to move your waist, move your head. Combinations. You have Golovkin ahead. I do. Hmm. Sergio? I think it's a close fight, but I have Canelo ahead. I think he, he banked uh, the early rounds. He went into the body. He invested in, in, in some early rounds. So I have Canelo ahead. I do as well. Again, it could be very close. I could touch the scorecards. You pointed out to illustrate that. Here now in round 11, two rounds left. Certainly, Triple G has answered that. And here we see a couple of shades of that first fight with Joe Alvarez opening the round backed up against the ropes. We did not expect to see the 36-year-old man 
coming on strong in the later round. But here he is. Very different second fight. Hard shots by Golovkin. You can hear them land. Canelo looking to answer back. Golovkin fires back and lands a right hand. And a jab. And a combination. His whole body not behind him. But every shot lands and these shots hurt. Another jab lands. Right hand by Canelo. Now they trade. They're both trying to land chopping shots around the glove now. They understand that they're dealing with uh, fighters that they have great technique. You got to come around the gloves now. Both with a jab, both with the uppercut. Body shots tried by Canelo. Hello. He drops his elbows to get down low and block him. trying to soft jab, trying to bring the hammer in, whether it's with the uppercut or a straight right hand. Smoking right uppercut there by Canelo. When it comes to the end of the fight now, now it's not about power and speed because you're too tired, your endurance is gone. Now technique is the crucial thing. And right now both men are lacking a little bit of that, but they're still fighting hard. Great body shot there on the, the inside by Canelo. And that came off his head movement as well. Canelo was able to dip down, missing the shot, and then just instinctively unloading the body shot. Push, push. You think of all the thousands of hours both of these men have put in the gym get to this point and get to the 12th round, the final round of this championship fight. Did land some shots, okay? You have to be ready. All right? Yeah. Good jabs, good jabs. That right hand better right here, like I said, okay? Make sure we turn it, but we gotta stay busy. It's only three minutes. Yeah. It's only three minutes, all right? Deep breath. Three minutes. round three minutes left the rematch and it has been outstanding has not gone as expected but it is very close and both men come out firing Eddie Reynoso Canelo's trainer told him we've been winning the entire fight do not give this man any opportunity to knock you out we're in charge we've been winning let's close the show hard uppercut by Triple G coming in both men suddenly energized they know three minutes left as they summon their will for the attack. Both fighters somewhat weary, both somewhat spent, but both being driven by their own will. Canelo slides down, trying to throw the right uppercut. That's just a slip. It just shows you how tired their bodies are. He digs that body shot in. This entire fight has been fought in the middle of the ring. Just intense body work, everything. Just punch for punch, combinations, the defense, the subtle movement, the pivots. It's just been a brilliant performance in the middle of the ring by both fighters. Now time to slug it out. Standing right in front of each other. No dancing in this one. Final round. Golovkin fires back. Canelo that time with the combination. That uppercut has landed all night. Both men marked up. Both men have been bloodied. Has not altered the fight. It just shows the wear and the punishment that's been doled out in this bout. How much does each man have left? Up on his toes, resets, re engages, 
And now they trade. That hook landed by Canelo. And Canelo still coming forward with those sneaky body shots on the inside. Yeah, the body work from Canelo Alvarez has been the big advantage for him tonight. Virtually no body work from Golovkin. Great body work from Canelo. No body work and no punishing jabs like he did in the first fight. He's been backing up the entire fight. He's had some punishing moments, but it, enough. We're going to find out. Final moments of this fight. It's been outstanding. Who will be the middleweight champion of the world? We hope to get a definitive result, but it won't be easy. Fans are on their feet for the final second. These fighters deserve it. Both men are spent. And it's over. Canelo can smile now, and Golovkin with the embrace. Outstanding middleweight championship fight. It's going to